Let me just pose for him. Give him that prison pose real quick. Giovanna Jackson, ex-convict turned motivational speaker. I'm a life coach with a goon hand. Yeah. Back when I was in the joint, I remember eavesdropping on this Aryan Nation motherfucker's phone call. He's sitting there for like an hour yelling at his three-year-old daughter for inviting a black dude to a birthday party. He telling her it's going to ruin his reputation if she keep the shit up. I couldn't help myself. I said, no, nah, nigga. Your reputation was ruined the minute you gave up a carton of cigarettes to get that nasty-ass swastika tattered on your Adam's apple. Shit was all fucked up. You can only see half of it. Looked like his chin was in a fucking foot race. This nigga gonna cut me a look, but he ain't know I had my shank in my sleeve. I was just trying to stay positive. See if I get the warden to put me on one of them dog training programs, because that's what I used to do. I used to train them drug dogs, call them scratch and sniff. I had them in the hood, man, because all these junkies would lose their drugs, nigga, for $5.00. My amp staff, he might shit in your house, but he'll find them mollies, heard me. As I recall, man, business was booming because Hollywood had the most methamphetamine hollers per square foot in all of Broward County. Listen, 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 listen. I'm talking about Hollywood, Florida. I ain't say Hollywood, California with the Walk of Fame, Hollywood, Florida with the Walk of Famine. Cause a methamphetamine holic don't eat nothing but Cheetos and semen. It's a fucked up combination when you can't get either one of them sticky motherfuckers off your fingers. I mean, what you gonna do? You gonna lick that cheese dust off your semen fingers? Shit. And all that sodium might explain why all these meth heads is dying from heart disease. Then again, telling the meth head he dying from heart disease is like telling Lance Armstrong he lost a friend on Facebook. That's what I forgot to do actually. Where my shit at? Unfriend this nigga. How much y'all wanna bet this motherfucker turn to Jesus? But anyway, this Aryan Nation motherfucker gonna hang up the phone and get the chirp. And I'm like, I know he ain't talking to me, but then he gonna get up in my face, man. We lock arms, and the next thing you know, I'm gargling pepper spray. Boom, I am you. They strip me down naked, throw me in the hole, get to feeding the nigga Neutraloaf. And for those of you who don't know, man, Neutraloaf, man, it's just these dehydrated bricks of dead goldfish, giblets, and chitlins. For real, you can look the shit up on Google, man. N-U-T-R-A-L-O-A-F, Neutraloaf. I was bitter. Nigga, I was bitter. This piece of mountain trash gonna get me put in the hole for a technicality. Like I said in my judicial review, yes, I had the shank on my person, but the skinhead in question was not the intended recipient. The more I go over this trial in my head, nigga, the more I want to kill this snotsy. That's what I call them snotty Nazis. How the fuck is three-year-old daughter inviting a black dude to a birthday party gonna ruin his reputation when he a fucking life up? That's like busting a U-turn at a DUI checkpoint, nigga. It don't matter. You doing time regardless. I got heated sitting there with my asshole exposed on this cold ass concrete. Don't nothing make me hotter than a cold asshole. And these rats ain't got no fucking manners. Crawling all on your face while you trying to sleep. Eating neutral low crumbs out your mustache. That's how I got this herpes on my lip. But as them days went by, I lost all sense of time. And it was a trip too, cause you sit in the darkness long enough and your eyes adjust and that thick stench of urine becomes an aphrodisiac. And never mind that shit about going blind, because I must have masturbated for like a week straight, and if anything, my vision got better. I sat there in the darkness, stiffer than a child molester with a handful of tokens and a Chuck E. Cheese. I could suddenly see my own aura. It was purple and orange, fuchsia with a hue of white, a little sepia tone, and a drop shadow. It was nice. But the longer I sat in silence, no phone, no bickering, no snotsies, the louder my thoughts became. And every single one of them thoughts was about as negative as a basketball wise reunion. I didn't even realize that I'd become such a hater. That shit snuck up on me like diabetes on my homeboy, Delorious. Rest in peace, my nigga. Instead of eavesdropping on this white sub premise, I should have been eavesdropping on my damn self. I was so distracted, internalized in this negative environment that I had lost all touch with the real me. See, it's a difference between standing in the mirror and standing in your own skin. Tweet that one, I'm locked out my account. But my point is, the hardest thing you will ever do in your life is absolutely nothing. That's right. It takes courage to do nothing. And by nothing, I mean no phone, no Twitter, no Facebook, no YouTube, no TV. Just stillness. Just you in silence. I bet you couldn't do that shit for one day. Nigga, I bet you couldn't do that shit for one hour. It's only 3% of the people in the world disciplined enough to exercise that type of stillness. And that 3% controls all the wealth. That's why we distract ourselves. Shit, some of us keep undesirable company because we find undesirable company more pleasant than our own. A motherfucker rather be distracted than fuck with himself. But the moral to the story is this.
But the moral to the story is this. Your strength, your goals in life, your true purpose, your wealth is in your solitude. Now ask yourself, are you brave enough to face the silence? Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Tijuana Jackson. And this is Prison Logic. And y'all know how I get down, man. Put your questions in the comment box. You know what I'm saying? If you subscribe to my channel, I might let you slide up in one of these. Talking about my t-shirt. To see full episodes of Prison Logic, please visit TijuanaJackson.com.